Hello guys and welcome back to Football Talks. Today we're going to talk about transfers and especially what do some of the Premier League biggest teams need in the transfer window. So, let's get started. The first team we pick to present is Liverpool FC. The Reds have been linked with many up-and-coming prospects as well as some experienced players. LFC is bound to win the Premier League as the latest reports say that the FA have decided to continue the league in June. So without further ado, here are the most known LFC transfer rumours. According to reports from the Mirror, Liverpool are showing keen interest in Valencia's young, exciting prospect Ferran Torres. The 20-year-old is a very talented and interesting player who can play on both flanks as a winger. He has started a lot for Valencia this season, having had 25 appearances in La Liga and 16 in the Champions League. This transfer rumour has been going around for quite some time, the 27th of March to be exact, but we believe it is worth to mention it since Torres is a player with huge potential. His performances are also very good for a footballer his age. In addition, a report from Spain has suggested that Liverpool would be interested in making a move for PSG's young superstar Kylian Mbappe. According to Spanish outlet El Desmarque, and uh, as cited by HITC, Liverpool uh, have made a formal offer for the 21-year-old without mentioning a fee. Seems suspicious, to be honest. Real Madrid have continuously been attributed with an interest with a young forward, but Liverpool, despite Jurgen Klopp categorically ruling out such a transfer, continue to be mentioned as a possible destination. Mbappe's exquisite performances this season do suggest that he would be a top signing for the Reds. However, the aforementioned report that Liverpool have made an offer for the Frenchman doesn't seem unlikely. Yes, we'll wait and see. The final rumour, none other than the Liverpool transfer rumours rated post boy himself, Timo Werner. The 24-year-old striker from RB Leipzig, you all should have memorized his statistics for the current campaign by now, they haven't had a ch uh, chance to alter since March. Werner has scored 27 goals in 36 games in all competitions so far with this term. Timo Werner has been linked with Liverpool for quite some time now. Uh, the only problem is that the Reds might have trouble finding a place for him in their current squad. Uh, what I would like to suggest is that Roberto Firmino could play at CAM, thus allowing Werner to play at striker. Now we'll continue with Manchester City. City have been hot and cold most of the time this season, as they've had periods when they're dominated games and periods when they just haven't go good enough. The main problem this season has been their defence, which has been weakened by the departure of club legend Vincent Kompany and the injury problems of Amerik Laporte. Their left-back options have also been questionable at times. As a result, they've already considered 31 goals in 28 games this season, when last season in 38 games they considered just 23. So, we're currently to start with the defence and especially the centre-back position. City currently have three senior centre-backs in Laporte, Otamendi and Stones. So there is definitely room for improvement. And with Otamendi set to leave the club this summer and Stones' future in doubt, we think that it would be best for City to buy two centre-backs this summer, an experienced and recognised player for the starting eleven, and a younger player that would develop in the hands of Guardiola. For the first one, there are obviously the names of Khalidou Koulibaly and Milan Skriniar that have been linked with the club, but they have been, become so well known that we've chosen to cover other options, with the first one being Ruben Diaz. The Portuguese has been brilliant once again this season for Benfica, competing a massive 2.8 tackles and interceptions and 70 passes per game, while also winning 60% of his duels. Another great option would be RB Leipzig started Dayot Upamecano. Upamecano has all the attributes of a great modern day defender. He is blessed with great reaction and recover from any position he finds himself on the wrong side of the ball, which makes forwards work extremely hard to get past him. His de defensive numbers this season have been generally elite, with him completely in four tackles and interceptions per game, while also making 70 clearances all season. Finally, we have Marseille wonder kid Bubakar Kamara. Kamara has enjoyed a breakthrough season at Marseille playing 24 of his possible 27 games and registering 4.1 tackles and interceptions per 90 minutes, and also completes the respectable 55 passes per game with incredible accuracy of 86%. All these three options are still super young and definitely have a lot to learn, 
But it's safe to say that were anybody of these three to come in, he would be a worthy partner for Laporte next season. Moving on regarding the left-back position, here at Football Talks we believe that Benjamin Mendy has done enough this season to earn a new opportunity by Pep Guardiola. So if we were City, we would sell either Zinchenko or Angelino and buy a left-back to compete with Mendy, because the other two just aren't good enough for a side that competes in four competitions. Some options for City to consider are Sevilla's 23-year-old Spaniard, Sergio Reguilón, and Lee's breakthrough star, Hassan Kamara, with both of them recording around four tackles and interceptions per 90. Now, as we know, club icon David Silva is set to depart at the end of the season after a decade of magical moments on the field. Phil Foden is his natural hire and will be handed a much bigger role next season, but we don't think that he is mature enough footballing-wise, to start week in, week out for one of the best teams in the world. So midfield signing must surely be a high priority for Manchester City. The most likely transfer is definitely Lyon's Hussein Mawar. The 21-year-old has enjoyed another amazing season, scoring three and assisting a further four, while completing 48 passes, 70 touches and 1.5 tackles and interceptions per game, and after a report yesterday said that Lyon will definitely sell Award in the summer, with Pep being a known admirer of the player. A move to Etihad seems more likely than ever. After some smart recruitment in the summer and January transfer window, United are getting closer and closer to returning to their glory days. Most notably, the signings of Harry Maguire and Aaron Van Bissaka have improved their defense dramatically, while the January signing of Bruno Fernandes has added the missing creativity that was lacking in the first half of the season. Even so, United still needs to make some improvements to their squad if they want to go back to the top. We are going to start with the CDM position, since it's the position which has exposed United the most of the season. Nemanja Matic is already 33 years old, and neither Fred nor Pereira are out and doubt DMs. So we can see that United are in a great need of a DM which will protect their defensive line. For our first suggestions, we have chosen League One duo Bubakari Sumare and Ibrahim Sangare. Both have averaged around 5 tackles and interceptions, uh, 55 passes and 70 touches per game. Numbers that are genuinely elite, still only 21 and 22 respectively. Either of them would be an incredible addition to United's midfield. There are of course other more experienced options like Alan and DD and Thomas Partley, uh, all of which are also being considered at United. Moving on, left back has been a big problem for United in years and despite the emergence of Brandon Williams and Luke Shaw's improvement, we still think that United could do with another uh, left back. The names that have proposed are already well known and experienced with them being Alex Telles and Alejandro Grimaldo who have both had amazing seasons in Portugal, recording 8 goals and 11 assists combined, and it is finally the time for them to make the step to a top 5 league. Finally, one of United's main priorities this summer should definitely be buying a young right midfielder for the next 5 to 10 years, since it is a position which since Ronaldo's departure in 2009 hasn't been filled. The obvious choice there is Yadon Sancho, a player which would add uh, electric pace and incredible dribbling skills in Manchester United's wings. This year he has uh, had the season of his life recording 14 goals and 15 assists in the Bundesliga alone. Furthermore, he completes the incredible 4 dribbles, 59 passes, uh, 79 touches and 1.3 crosses per game. Numbers which for a player of his age are unheard of. But Sancho could cost a huge amount of money, so United should probably look to bring in someone cheaper. And our suggestions would be Sassuolo's Domenico Berardi with 14 goal contributions this season. Fiorentina's Federico Chiesa with 9, Werder Bremen's Milot Rahisa with 11, and Villarreal's Gerald Moreno with 14.
Continuing, we have Tottenham, who will certainly have a busy transfer window. The main goal that Tottenham want to achieve in the summer window is to improve their defence. Hugo Lloris, being 33 years old, is past his prime years and a replacement for the future is certainly something that the Spurs will want. Andre Onana is one of the most popular replacements, as the Cameroonian is impressive at his current club, Ajax, and his, the price of £35 million seems like a bargain. However, the fierce competition, as other big clubs such as Chelsea, PSG and Barcelona, also want to buy Onana. A backup option is Mike Magnan, who deserves to be in a bigger club than his, than his current one, Lille, and a move to London might be the best thing for him to maximize his potential. His price tag is like Onana's, as Spurs would have to pay for the Frenchman around £35 million. Another player who is starting aging in is Jan Metogen, and a replacement for the Belgian is vital. Koulibaly is one of the most popular rumors for Spurs, however, due to the coronavirus, teams will not be able to pay big transfer fees, and the move for Koulibaly is highly unlikely. A cheaper option might be Samuel Umtiti, as Tottenham and Barcelona are considering a swap deal, with Umtiti and Semedo going to North London and Ndombele the other way. Such a deal might be beneficial for both sides, as Tottenham would sort out their defence and Barca their midfield. However, the biggest problem is at right back. As previously mentioned, Nelson Semedo would be a quality signing, as the right back is and will be for years to come a world class player. Thomas Munier is another possible player who might join Spurs, as Jose Mourinho seems like he wants the be- Belgian in his side. Finally, another option is Norwich youngster Max Arons, as Spurs might buy both him and his team and Jamal Lewis for a fa- for transfer fee around £45 million. Pounds. Finally, Spurs would like a backup striker. Harry Kane is a world-class striker, however, he is injury-prone and a backup is needed. Olivier Giroud would be a quality backup for Spurs, however, the Frenchman seems like he does not want to join the North London side after all. Luka Jovic is another option. After an successful one-year spell at Real Madrid and the 30-time European champions, would require a 45 million transfer fee to leave the Serbian to go or otherwise agree on a loan deal. Now we'll continue with Chelsea. Chelsea are in need of a centre-back to partner Antonio Rüdiger. Zuma is having a mediocre season, while Christensen is not ready for being a starting 11 player. Lampard's high defensive line means his defenders need to have pace, but in such a high-risk system, they also need to be alert to danger. A new left-back would be also welcomed by Lampard's Raider Chelsea as Marcos Alonso and Emerson have struggled with injury at times in this campaign and have been both linked with moves away from Stamford Bridge. The Blues are well stocked in the wide areas, particularly with Hakim Ziyech arriving from Ajax in July, but a line-breaking defender is a possibility to look at. The addition of a deeper playmaker, who can create through the middle, could transform their fortunes. Firstly, Felipe Coutinho has agreed to join Chelsea this summer to end his Barcelona nightmare. Playmaker left Liverpool for the Catalan club for 145 million in 2018. He's currently on loan at Bayern Munich until the end of the season, but the Bundesliga club are unlikely to take up their option to sign him permanently. Chelsea are the favourites to sign the 27-year-old, with the La Liga giants seeking as much as 90 million for the Brazilian. The Blues are willing to spend near 70 million. Furthermore, the London club is willing to sign David Alaba from Bayern. Alaba has spent the entirety of his professional career at Bayern, winning eight Bundesliga titles as well as the 2013 Champions League. However, his contract expires in the summer of 2021 and he has been linked with a move away from the Allianz Arena. He is known as a left-back but can also play as a centre-back and sometimes as a centre defense midfielder. Nevertheless, Bayern Munich manager Hansi Flick has said that David Alba is not for sale. Finally, Chelsea are the latest of several clubs to be linked with a move for Napoli star Dries Mertens. The Belgian forward is nearing the end of his contract with Italian club Napoli, and that has alerted the Blues to a possible summer scoop. Mertens has been a huge success since moving from Napoli to PSG Eindhoven, with 118 goals in 304 games across all competitions. The 32-year-old would be a great addition to Lampard's squad, as well as the perfect replacement for Olivier Gilou. So, now we move on to Arsenal. With Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang being on the verge of leaving the Gunners, Arsenal are in need of another striker 
and they will only remain with La Gazette. They are also in desperate need of a new center back, as 31 year old Socrates has not been in the best form lately, while Mustafi is not a great player. They are also in need of a midfielder, as Dani Ceballos will be returning to Real Madrid this summer. To begin with, Arsenal are considering a swap deal to sign Thomas Partey from Atletico Madrid. The Gunners want a defensive midfielder this summer, as Torreira and Xhaka are not having a great season, and according to Mikel Arteta, Partey is the ideal signing, but his release clause is too rich for their present finances, which means a swap deal may be in order. Bleacher Report suggests that Arsenal could offer Skodver Mustafi and Matteo Guendouzi to Atletico for Partey. In addition, the English club are willing to sign Adrien Rabiot from Juventus. Mikel Arteta had contacted the 25-year-old earlier this year, but Juventus blocked his move. Now the move would be more possible, uh, while the swap deal with the Gunners offering Obama Young would be very likely. The Frenchman has not had a great season with the old lady and has not been given much playtime. Therefore, a new start would be welcome. He will be a suitable choice for the Gunners as he will be able to boost their chance creation and also help defensively. Finally, Arsenal have been linked with multiple defenders other the last month, uh, such as Samuel Umtiti. Nevertheless, nothing is official yet. Thankfully for them, they are to land Upamecano transfer, with RB Leipzig willing to take cut price 34 million sterling pounds after Bayern pulled out. With a 21-year-old fast approaching the final year of his contract, Leipzig are believed to be willing to lower their asking price in order to ensure that they are not left empty-handed at the end of the contract in 2021. Upamecano made 29 appearances this season and had been in great form. Moving on, we have Leicester City. The Foxes are enjoying a fantastic season in the Premier League, being third with 53 points and 8 points ahead of Man U, making them firm favourites for Champions League football next year, even if Man City avoid their European ban. Brendan Rodgers' side is great, however, is far from perfect, and the Foxes will need many signings in order to be able to compete in the best European competition. One of Leicester's weakest links, if not the weakest, is its captain, Johnny Evans. In spite of having an incredible season, the Northern Irish is aging and as he is 32 years old and Brendan Rodgers would like a long-term rep- replacement. One of the most popular names in the Fox's shortlist is Christopher Ayer, as the 22-year-old shows great potential and Rodgers already knows him from his time at Celtic. Although there are many European giants who want the Norwegian, Ayer is keen to join Leicester as he would like to play once again for Brendan Rodgers. However, Celtic will require £25 million, which might be an overpriced deal. Another spot that Leicester would need to sort out of the transfer market is left back. Keeping Chilwell is somewhat unlikely, as the Englishman looks for a move to a bigger team, with Chelsea and Manchester City being the most interested clubs. Considering Chilwell decides to leave the Foxes, Robin Cosens can be an amazing solution. The German is currently having a successful spell at Atalanta and he is able to play wherever in the left side of the pitch. Therefore, he would be a fantastic sign a replacement for Chilwell at the Leicester side. Another option is Kostadinos Tsimikas. The Griff left back is having a fantastic season at Olympiacos and he has some fantastic performances at the Champions and the Europa League, being able to support class forwards such as Gnabry, Aubameyang and Adama Traore. The Greek has shown his potential and he certainly could be called signing for the Foxes. Olympiacos are asking for 25 million pounds, however such a fee seems unlikely due to the coronavirus and his price tag will possibly go down. Wolves have been one of the surprise teams this season, sitting on the 6th place right now. Coach Nuno Espirito is offering a modern playing style, making the team fun to watch. Nevertheless, there is always room for improvement. Starting from the vital goalkeeper position, Gulf's owner Fosun International has linked them with former goalkeeper Karius of Liverpool. After the UCL final, for which he is notorious, he has been on loan to Besiktas. In the 1920 season, he has conceded 46 goals and he has 8 clean seats until now. Admittedly, Gulf's have agreed with the goalkeeper, but that is not confirmed yet. His price is calculated to be 4 million, and I don't think they will withdraw from the chase soon. In the midfield, Wolves are targeting Joao Palinha. 
he started his career at the academies of Sporting Lisbon and in the 2019-2020 season he was on loan to Braga. At this season he played in 18 games and scored two goals. If they complete this transfer they will continue their tradition with Portuguese players which has proven successful in recent years. Price is approximately 4.5 million. Another transfer target is the club breezes striker Emmanuel Denis. The youngster has been very impressive this season with nine goals and some crucial goals in European competitions. He is a versatile player and can be a good addition to Hull's roster. His price is around 13.5 million. However, Hull's may find difficulties in signing the 22-year-old. To continue, there are players who are bound to leave, like the powerful winger Adama Traoré who has received offers from Liverpool, Barcelona and the Citizens, and Neves who has leaked his name with United and Barca. However, Hulls have said that none of them will be sold just because they are core players for Coach Santo. Now let's move on to Everton. Everton has not, uh, has not been having a great season, even though it has uh, been improved dramatically since the arrival of Carlo Ancelotti. Uh, the Toffees are lacking depth in most positions and there is a lot of room for improvement. Having just three centre-backs, another defender is much needed at the club. Everton are therefore interested in Barcelona's Jean-Claire Todibo after Schalke decided against making his loan deal permanent. The Barcelona youngster plays as a centre-back, a position the Toffees need to invest in, and is valued at around 25 million right now. Although the Frenchman is still very young, he's very talented and will be a good signing for the future. In addition, a new CAM will be more than welcome as Sigurdsson is now 31 years old, while he's lately out of form. James Rodriguez has been associated with a move to the Merseyside club and the Real Madrid man would be an ideal choice for the uh, camp position. Nonetheless, such a move would not be very likely. Moreover, Everton are searching for a world-class centre mid. Andre Gomez has suffered multiple injuries throughout the season, while Delft has also not been having the best of the seasons. Hence, the Toffees have been linked with Juventus midfielder Aaron Ramsey, but have been sadly dealt a blow in the rumoured pursuit according to reports in Italy. Finally, Napoli are hoping Everton will do a package deal for both Alan and Irving Lozano, which would cost in the region of 70 to 80 mil. Carlo Ancelotti's interest in the two Napoli players is no secret, while the Partenope are not particularly eager to keep either of them after a disappointing season. Lozano made 28 competitive appearances, scoring only three goals with two assists, while Alan is under contract until June 2023, but has fallen out badly with the club hierarchy and coach Gennaro Gattuso. So, finally we have Watford. Watford are in a weird situation regarding their squad building. The contracts of five of the players are expiring this June, with three of them being goalkeepers, Foster, Gomez and Bachmann, meaning that we need two goalkeepers immediately. In the left back position, two options. Either we will recall Pervises to Pignan from loan, we will talk about him later, or we will have to purchase one. As far as midfielders are concerned, I think those Watford have are adequate for both now and the future, as it has players like De Cure, Pereira, but also Kina, Del Basiru and Joao Pedro. At the wings, there is a possibility of Ken Semar returning for both left mid and left wing position, but Watford may need an additional player supporting Gerard Tullofeu at the right side of the pitch. Striker is something Watford will lack in the future, because Dini is 31 years old and will be insufficient in the future. Gray has the second most lavish contract in the team, but he's offering close to nothing this season, with 23 appearances and only two goals. So we saw the inability in scoring when Dine was injured. A striker will definitely be needed, however, Adalberto Peñaranda is at Watford's disposal. The 22-year-old striker has played very well whenever he was given the chance and he could not be neglected this season. Generally, I believe Watford needs to be based in young players' development. So, Watford has already completed the transfer, buying former midfielder of League 2 side, Le Havre, Papé Gouillet. Gouillet is a French international for U18 and under-19 teams and may prove a good signing for the upcoming years. 
for strikers, what for their observing Yuan Wisa. He is currently playing in League 2 Saint Lorient, having scored 16 goals in 30 matches. He is also being chased by West Brom, The Saints and Fulham. Other players that we watch include, uh, for example, Usman Slimani and other players which are observed by Watford. So, uh, we have also Luis Suarez and Pervis Estupiñan, which are two loanies who have impressed with their performances in Spain and have attracted interest from giant clubs like Lazio, Barcelona, United and Atletico Madrid. So, this was the situation of the top Premier League teams as far as their transfers and squad building are concerned. This was the video. Please drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already done. This was Football Talks for today. Bye.